So I just dug out some of my lead casting stuff from behind the shop. I got a sheet of lead here. I got the old pot here. And uh, I've got an old hammer that's been floating around my shop that's been slowly degrading. And it's a cheaper hammer. So I thought today we'd do a bit of an experiment. Let's have a look at the hammer. Now, the hammer that I have here is a standard soft face hammer. And it's seen a little bit of abuse. It was kind of one of those tools that when I needed it, I hit something a little bit too hard with it. And I split the plastic on it. And lucky for me, there's a couple bolts that stick out either end. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that these bolts are absolutely dry. And I actually threw them in the oven there for a little bit just to heat them up and get rid of any moisture. And then I'm going to wipe the face of the hammer off and make sure it as well is super dry because we don't want any of the lead spitting up at me. We got to remember, water expands 1800 times its size. So if even the tiny bit of a, of a drop is there, it's going to spatter all over the place. So I'm going to tighten these bolts in and later on, it might be a mistake that I loosen them off a bit, but my theory was I'd be able to tighten them up a little bit more after the lead set in. Now I'm using some precision tools here, but I'm going to be really careful with them. The idea of using these tools here is I'm just going to hold the hammer in the upright position, kind of level so that when I pour the lead, the top of it will be level with what I need. Now, you're probably thinking, I don't need a lead hammer, but some of these skills that I'm showing here are probably transferable to some other stuff, such as maybe doing babbit, or maybe casting lead fishing weights with different shapes and sizes. You kind of, kind of the sky's the limit. Although there are some cautions that you're going to need to learn about safety, it's a pretty easy task to do, as I found. This is sheet aluminum, and it held up quite well if I wrapped it a couple times. And I brought in, before I did any of the lead work, I brought my helper in here just to give me a hand with wrapping some of the baling wire around the tin. Now, like most things, it's kind of like arts and crafts. Kind of like when you made a telescope when you were a kid, you just kind of twist the inside of it and it makes it a little bit tighter. I mean, a lot of the stuff in the shops like arts and crafts, it's just for adults, really. Now, if you've done any rebar before, we're just gonna wrap this around here quick. And then we're just gonna tighten it up much like you would on rebar. Sorry. Okay. So there's two factors that I found while I was doing this. Lead is a little bit more viscous than water, so it doesn't have to be as tight like you'd have something pouring water into it. And second off, the aluminum and the steel are going to take a bit of the heat away from it when it gets thinner, and it'll kind of plug its yep. own hole there. There you go. But keep in mind, as we're pouring this, we got to make sure that if it does spout out, we got to get out of the way quick. Halfway down, it'll start twisting. And now that we got this all ready it'll and it's ready to go, Let's get the pot and let's melt some lead. This is where I asked the young lad to step out of the shop because I don't think a 10 year old needs to be exposed to lead and we want to keep everyone safe. Also, I do have a good ventilation system on here so any smoke I create gets immediately sucked away by the ventilation system. And now that the lead's melted, let's give it a pour in there. And now that I let it cool down for about 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to take all this stuff off and recycle it in my scrap metal bin. Pretty impressed with that. That looks oh. quite good. I'll just cut this little nibbon off here and I'm pretty much going to flip it around. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. This is pretty sweet. Really shiny. So hot? to do this again, I think I would have used something other than a torch. I've got a turkey burner out back for using like for deep frying turkeys, but I use it for industrial stuff, of course. And it would have heated the lead a little bit slower. By heating it slower, I would have created less vapor, which was sucked outside by the venting system. But what I did see was a bunch of slag on top. It was easily remedied by having a piece of scrap metal over the top to keep it all out. Now, let's give this hammer a try and see how it works out. So just for fun, I kind of set this up in the milling machine just for demonstration purposes to see how it was going to work. And we might have found some problems with it. Hey, thanks for hanging out. We learned two really cool things. But before I tell you that, the cost of admission is a big thumbs up. And I really appreciate your guys' support. And the first thing that I learned on this, I'm probably going to throw some Loctite on here because these bad boys keep unwinding. And what? second of all, that lead is super duper soft. and Every time you smack that, it, it deforms a bit more. 
And that's the purpose of what we want it to do. There's very specific jobs that I'll need a leaded hammer for, but now I got one. So anyways, if you like this video, check this one out here. I know you're gonna like it. Take care.